grow your plants, collect water, undergo photosynthesis and compete to have the best plant points while learning about how it all works in cellulose. And today we'll be teaching you how to play cellulose, a plant cell biology game. Game designed by John Covey and Steve Schlepphorst and published by Genius Games. This is a standalone sequel to Cytosis, which allows for more control over some elements of the game. And hello everyone, it's Stella. And Taryn here from Maple University. All right, let's go to the classroom. In cellulose, players are plant cell organelles, trying to grow their plants as best they can to earn the most health points. In this worker placement game, players will be doing everything required to grow a plant, collecting the necessary nutrients, water, CO2, proteins and hormones, using those to photosynthesize and respire as they grow, producing leaves or roots to fuel their growth, while producing enzymes, receptors and more. Players score points as they do this and as they build the common cell wall. And when the cell wall track is complete, the game is over and whoever has scored the most health points will be the winner. To set up, lay out the main board, referring to the bottom right to make sure you choose the side of the board which matches your play account. Along the left, place the water level marker into the box showing the single horizontal line. Place one or two grey action markers into the central vacuole, depending on which side of the board you're using. Shuffle the deck of cell component cards with this back and deal one face up into each of these four slots. Lay out the plant growth board, showing this side up next to the main board. Each player chooses a colour and takes its seven wooden pieces. You'll hang on to your three action markers. And for the others, you'll place your health marker at zero on the score track, your central vacuole marker at the bottom of its matching track, and your two plant growth markers on the plant growth board, one at the top of the roots and the other at the bottom of the stem. In the two player game, additionally give each player one grey action marker. You'll be playing with four action markers each instead of three. Give each player one of these helper cards and return all remaining card types to the box. These are used for solo play. Make supplies of the six basic resources, water, carbon dioxide, proteins, hormones, carbohydrates, and adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. Choose a first player who takes the first player token. In clockwise order, give each other player water equal to their positions in turn order. So two for second player, three for third player, and so on until all players have their water. You're now ready to play. Cellulose is played in rounds, and each round is played in three phases, sunrise, daytime, and evening. In the sunrise phase, players will gain income, which can come from the plant growth board or from some cards. Second is the daytime phase. This is where the bulk of the game will take place. Starting with the first player and going clockwise around the table, players will take it in turns to play an action marker and resolve the action space they played on. Once all players have run out of action markers, you'll go to the evening phase, where you'll resolve control of the central vacuole, then reset the board for the next round. You'll continue taking complete rounds in this way until all spaces of the plant wall track have been filled. At the end of the round where that occurs, players will count up their final scores and whoever has earned the most points will be the winner. So now let's have a look at each phase of the round in detail. First is the sunrise phase and this is where you'll gain income, most of which comes from the plant growth board. Simultaneously, players find their two markers on the growth board, the one that is above the surface and the one that's down with the roots. Now gain all resources and benefits printed in the adjoining banners. In the first round, players will all simply gain one carbon dioxide and no water. But as players later progress their markers along this board, the rewards will become bigger and more varied. Just be clear that your income is only whatever is printed within this fork-tailed banner. In this case, it's three water, 
not these two hormones, and not these six water. We'll explain those a little bit later. The other potential source of income is cell component cards, specifically ones which show the sunrise icon. At the start of the round, if you've previously played any such cards, then gain their income as well. Second is the daytime phase, and this is when players take actions on the board. Starting with the first player and going clockwise, players will take turns to take a single one of their action markers and place it into an action space, immediately resolving the action. There are two types of action space, large and small. A small action space accommodates only a single action marker. If any player has taken this action, it blocks it out from all other players until the next round. A large action space can accommodate any number of workers, but only one of each colour. In this way, once you've chosen a large action space, you've blocked yourself out from taking that action again later in that round with the same coloured marker. For these purposes, grey coloured markers are considered their own colour regardless of who is playing it. Such that if you do have any grey markers, you will be able to use a large action space twice in the same round. Many locations within the cell have more than one action space, and you can use multiple different action spaces within the same part of the cell, you just can't use the same large action space. You must be legally allowed to take the action of the space you place in. For example, if you can't pay the cost, anything showing a red number is a cost, then you're not allowed to place there. If it comes to your turn and you have no action markers remaining, then you must pass. Not all players will necessarily run out at the same time, so any players who still have markers continue taking turns in clockwise order until all players are out of markers. At that point, the daytime phase will end and you'll move to the evening phase. So now let's look at all of the actions available on the board. First is the xylem, and this is where you gain water. Upon placing your action marker in this large action space, immediately gain water equal to the current water level. Then reduce the water level one step. From that water you've just gained, you may now pay between zero and three of it into the central vacuole. This is where the cell stores water. If you do this, place the stored water into your wedge of the vacuole. Water that you keep may be spent on other actions. Water that you store in the central vacuole gets resolved as part of the evening phase's resolution but you should consider it spent. You're not allowed to withdraw water from here to pay for other actions. The second location is the stomata, and this is where you absorb carbon dioxide. Here there is a small action space which allows you to gain six carbon dioxide, or there's a large action space allowing you to gain four carbon dioxide. When you take either of these actions, you drop the water level by one step. However, unlike the xylem, the amount you gain does not depend upon the water's level. Although these are both large action spaces, they are limited by the water level, and once the water level has reached this x, neither of these actions may be taken again this round. The chloroplasts allow you to photosynthesize, which is represented by this icon. For each photosynthesis you gain, spend six water and six carbon dioxide to produce one carbohydrate. The scientists among you will recognize this as the exact chemical reaction for photosynthesis. To use the large action space, you photosynthesize once, and if you use the small action space, you must photosynthesize twice. That means you must already be holding 12 of each resource to place here. Do note that you'll see that photosynthesis icon elsewhere, for example, if you've grown out to the leaves, then you'll get the opportunity to do a photosynthesis at its full normal cost in the sunrise phase of each round. In the cell wall, you may contribute to building the cell wall. To do this, take one carbohydrate from among your resources and add it to the next open space from left to right along the wall. Immediately gain health points equal to the number you cover. You must place strictly from left to right, even if there are higher scoring spaces further along the track that you'd prefer to use. 
You'll then also gain this icon, which is to store one water from the general supply, not from your personal resources, in the central vacuole. Note well the difference between this icon and the one we saw earlier in the xylem. In the xylem, you were paying the water that you just gained from that action into the central vacuole. With this icon, you're taking it directly from the supply and storing it. The mitochondria is the site of cellular respiration, and when you take one of these two small action spaces, you must pay one carbohydrate from your resources to gain either 5 or 6 ATP. In the ribosomes, you'll synthesize proteins, gaining 5 proteins from the supply for the small action space, or 3 for the large. In the cytoplasm, you'll synthesize hormones, 3 for the small action space, or 2 for the large. These three special types of resources don't grow the cell wall, but they'll help you in the next couple of actions. The first is the plasma membrane, and this is where you'll grow either your leaves or roots on the plant growth board. When you take this action space, then perform one step of growth, paying the cost for that growth as shown in red numbers, and gaining as a once-off immediate reward any benefit showing the exclamation mark. With this action, you'll do likewise, but growing your roots deeper into the ground. In the large action space, you may choose either to grow leaves or roots, but must pay an extra protein to take the action. You must always grow further away from the surface. So if you've reached the end of the path that you've grown along, then you cannot grow on that part of the plant anymore. At the bottom of the board are four cell component cards, each with an associated action space. And when you place in one of these spaces, pay the carbon dioxide cost shown, and then take the card into your hand. You may hold any number of cards in hand. At the end of any one of your daytime phase turns, after placing your action marker and resolving the action, you may play at most one card from your hand even on the same turn you gained it. To do this, pay the resource cost shown on the left hand side, immediately gain the points printed on the card, and then resolve its effect. There are four types of cards. A protein storage vacuole lets you reclaim any one of your action markers that's already been placed on the main board, returning it to your supply to be placed again on a future turn. This will give you more actions and let you tactically free up some of the more valuable small action spaces on the board. Starches always cost carbohydrates and will score you 6 points per carbohydrate. They'll then let you draw a number of cell component cards blindly off the deck before discarding another number of them. And this can include cards that were already in your hand before the action. Enzymes get more powerful the more of them you have. The first time you play an enzyme, you'll simply gain the points and resolve the effect in the light banner. Here it would be drawing one card blindly from the deck. Then, each subsequent time you play an enzyme, you'll gain the points and the immediate effect for the enzyme you've just played. Then, you may activate each of your previously played enzymes by paying one protein to resolve its linked effect. As you chain enzymes together, this lets you do many things in the same card play. Here now gaining this immediate effect and spending 2 protein on these bonuses. Resolving the chained enzyme effects is optional. For example, here I could pay 1 extra protein to resolve the effect of my choice. Finally, the pink cards are the specialisations and these all give you ways of scoring end of game points for something else you've achieved. Here, for example, this one gives you two points for every protein storage vacuole card that you've played. Some of them also give you some ongoing income or a special ability. You are allowed to play multiple copies of the same card together to get even more points benefit. The last action space is Nucleus. Pay one carbon dioxide and then you take the first player marker and will become the first player from the next round onwards. This is the only way the first player marker changes hands, otherwise it remains with the same player from round to round. You also now draw one card blindly from the deck. 
Once all players are out of action markers, you'll proceed to the evening phase and resolve these five steps to set up for the next round. Firstly, recover all of your action markers. That means you'll reset the action markers to exactly how they were in game setup, particularly around the grey markers. In two players, each player takes one of the grey markers back and put the correct amount of grey markers in the central vacuole. Next, resolve central vacuole majorities. Whoever has the most or equal most water in the central vacuole will score, advancing their markers one step and gaining the amount of points in the new space reached. If you've already reached the final space, simply gain two points. Then as long as there are enough for everybody, each tied player gains one of the grey action markers to be used on the next round. If there aren't enough bonus action markers for all tied players, then this part of the reward is skipped. Now all players who gained any rewards remove all of their water from the central vacuole while all other players leave their water in place. Do note, you must have at least one water in the central vacuole to score any benefit. Next, add one carbohydrate from the main supply to the next space on the cell wall. This way, if no players are building the cell wall, you'll still progress towards the end game condition. Then reset the water level to the level corresponding to the current length of the cell wall. At the start of the game, this is the space with the single horizontal line. As soon as this first segment is filled and you've reached the two line space, water would refill to here. Likewise, once all of this segment is full, you'll start refilling to the top of the track. Next, discard any cards which are in a space showing an X. There'll be one or two of these spaces depending on your side of the board. Slide all remaining cards as far left as they'll go and refill from the top of the deck. You'll now proceed to the sunrise phase of the next round. The end of the game is triggered when the final space on the cell wall is filled with carbohydrate. Finish the current round, noting that the cell wall action can't be taken anymore. All players now have one final chance to play any cards they can afford from their hands, including activating enzymes, and then you'll proceed to final scoring. To the points that you've gathered through the game, add any points that are scored from your specialization cards, and if you have any carbohydrates remaining, gain four points for each. The player with the most health points wins. If tied, whoever is furthest advanced on the central vacuole track wins. If still tied, whoever produces the most water in the sunrise phase, and if still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Cellulose, a plant cell biology game. Thanks so much for watching. Your like and comments are much appreciated. Subscribe to see what's coming, and hopefully you have a wonderful day. See you next time.